Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the arrest and the violent assault on Speaker Nancy Pelosi's husband in their home. What police are saying the suspect you see there told them. Also this morning, new details on the man charged in the Delphi murder case, the suspect living in that community more than five years after the Indiana teens were killed. And an ABC News exclusive with Simone Ledward Bozeman. That's Chadwick Bozeman's widow. She's breaking her silence on his life, illness, and legacy. You're going to see it only here on GMA. A friendly reminder, early voting continues this week. We have you covered with our voter guide for the midterms. You can take a look at polling locations, hours, and the full ballot on ksat.com. Click on the article. Election day is next Tuesday, November the 8th. Well, still to come in the next hour of GMSA, you've probably seen lots of butterflies around late. We'll tell you how to identify some of the ones you are seeing here in South Texas. And Transguide, the big incident this morning is here at 10 and Crossroads area. RJ Marquez is tracking traffic for you. And Mike will have an update on your first day of November forecast still to come. The search continues this morning for the person who drove into the back of a Corvette and then sped away. We'll tell you if anyone was hurt in that crash. Houston Astros are ready for game three against the Phillies after they were rained out last night. We've got a game day preview. We even saw some rain over here last night at 63 degrees, 6 o'clock this morning. Will we see rain later throughout the week? Mike will let us know in just a bit. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. Rise and shine on your Tuesday. It is November 1st. We hope you had a great and safe Halloween last night. Halloween was beautiful weather last night. We The rain actually did us a favor and kind of held off until say after trick-or-treaters trick-or-treaters usually stop i don't know in my neighborhood around eight o'clock eight o'clock yeah. yeah and within a matter of hours we had storms in the area mike is here this morning and those storms have now moved out uh, we still have a few leftover uh, showers most everything is down to the southeast couple of storms though off to the northwest kind of a different line that's moving in okay. here so uh the roads may be damp a lot of them and some of the trans guide cameras rj is going to show you this in a moment appear to be on the dry side but again just kind of watch out for a few of those leftover damp spots from some of the rain last night. This is what's showing up on radar right now, and you can see the majority of everything is well down to the east and to the southeast. We do still have some uh, decent rain there in the extreme southeastern portion of Atascosa County, moving into Wilson County, a little bit closer into town. Uh, a lot of this is just uh, kind of some clutter around the radar site. There may be a few little little sprinkly showers kind of mixed in here and there around the area. So again, just be on the lookout for a few uh, damp spots still on the roads. And then we have some of these showers and thunderstorms. Del Rio up in toward just to the east of Rock Springs. These the line is moving up to the northeast. So this will uh, kind of hit some of our northwestern uh, hill country counties in the next couple of hours and even still maybe a leftover sprinkle this afternoon, although not very likely 63 in town, 59 Ball Verde, 55 Bernie stage. All of these numbers are on average 5 to 10 degrees above their respective normals. Mold ragweed are both on the low side this morning. The updated count is going to come out in about an hour and a half or so. 62, we will fluctuate a couple of degrees, but not drop down all that much. Still light jacket weather because it's kind of that dampish cool out there. And then it's just going to just kind of slowly step by step get up through the 60s this morning. And we are going to have some uh, some sunshine mixed on in here Then 70 for a high temperature, excuse me, low 70s this morning and then uh, low 70s later on this afternoon. Beg your pardon and uh, 72 for a high later on this afternoon. I'll get my number straight here in a second. Uh, we're going to have kind of warm and humid conditions for the next couple of days and then going in toward the weekend and late in the week, another front's going to move through here. Another chance for some rain weekend right now. Little hint looks great. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ, got some problems out there still? Yeah, a little bit of problems out there, Mike, as people make their way out during our six o'clock hour, maybe headed to school or work. And we're taking a look at our trans guide traffic camera here. I 10 at Crossroads. This is near the Wonderland of America's Mall uh, near this Van Jackson area. So the exit ramp has been blocked due to a rollover crash. And that's the most details that we have at the moment. Not sure how many vehicles were involved, but at least one there in that area. So just kind of keep caution. You could see that the for the most part, the eastbound lanes are moving pretty smooth throughout that area. So nothing on the main lanes, but the 
lay, but the exit ramp there at I-10 at Crossroads is blocked. So taking a look at our wider map, uh, there's a little bit of a, of a development that I'm following right here. This is a Loop 410 at Vince Engelman. They're on the uh, near sort of northeast side, kind of east side area there. There's a crash that's being reported, so I'll check on that and see the severity here in just a little bit. So uh, stay tuned for more on that. Uh, but there is a stall right here on uh, 410 eastbound lanes at Jackson Keller Road. So we always know that this is a very busy area as people make their way from I-10 to 410. So again, eastbound lanes there, 410 at Jackson Keller, a stall being reported this morning. Traffic still moving pretty smooth in that area. Again, the major incident this morning so far, a rollover crash, the exit ramp here at I-10 at Crossroads. So just take caution. You see these emergency lights, these emergency vehicles just kind of move over to the left and let them uh, kind of take care of their business and clear out this traffic. Mark and Sarah, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. This morning, San Antonio police are trying to find the person that slammed into the back of a person driving a Corvette and kept going. It happened around 9 last night and 410 near Eisenhower on the city's northeast side. Here's a video from the scene. The initial crash resulted in a secondary crash. Police say the Corvette stalled out only to be hit from behind by another driver who also did not stop. Investigators say a truck then tried to avoid the Corvette, but it overcorrected and flipped over. The Corvette driver was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries but no details just yet on who was in the truck. Well, flames cut trick-or-treating short for some. Instead of knocking on doors, they watched as firefighters put out flames at a west side home. No one was hurt. However, firefighters say they don't know how this fire started, but they do know it started in the backyard. They add the homeowner came home to the blaze and called 911. A few neighbors saw everything happen while they were out preparing for trick-or-treaters. Yeah, we can already see it. Um, it was very, the flames were very large. They were billowing. No mention. It was a little surreal and overwhelming. Um, my heart was racing. The whole neighborhood was uh, smoked. Uh, there, there was no wind, so it was just stagnant. The home was deemed not livable. We're told the homeowner will be staying with family for the time being. As for neighbors, they explained being able to keep Halloween traditions going helped ease neighborhood concerns. A break in turned sex assault case. It's an investigation Bear County deputies need your help with. They say it happened early yesterday at a home on Davalos Lane. That's in the Lunky, Lucky Ranch neighborhood in West Bear County. Investigators say someone got into an open garage door and then into the home. A suspect managed to get away. Deputies are asking neighbors for any surveillance video from that subdivision between the hours of 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. If you can help in the case, call 210-335-6000. Well, topping your morning consumer news, President Biden is accusing the oil industry of war profiteering. He's threatening to impose new taxes on the industry's record profits, a move oil executives say will only hurt consumers. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has a story. With just one week before the midterm elections and with 50% of voters saying inflation and the economy are their top concerns, President Biden is on the attack against big oil. Give me a break. Enough is enough now threatening to impose a so-called windfall tax on oil and gas companies after they reported record profits. ExxonMobil posting nearly $20 billion in earnings last quarter, $4 billion more than expected. Valero seeing a 400% increase in year-over-year -year profits. Rather than increasing their investments in America or giving American consumers a break, their excess profits are going back to their shareholders and they're buying back their stocks so the executive pays are going to skyrocket. Biden claims the companies are, quote, war profiting off the conflict in Ukraine and urged them to use their cash to expand production or lower their prices. If they don't, they're going to pay a higher tax on their excess profits and face other re restrictions. My team will work with Congress to look at these, op these options. The oil and gas industry dismissing Biden's statement as campaign rhetoric. The American Petroleum Institute saying oil companies do not set prices. Global commodities markets do. Increasing taxes on American energy discourages investment in new production, which is the exact opposite of what is needed. Any new tax would need to come from Congress, but on the state level, California Governor Gavin Newsom has made similar threats, vowing to hold a special session for lawmakers to consider a windfall tax to address what he calls the greed and manipulation that have driven prices to outrageous levels. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York.
Now to a tale of two publishing giants ending with a judge saying no. A federal judge has now blocked a proposed deal by Penguin Random House to buy Simon & Schuster. The judge agreeing with the Justice Department that merger would cut competition. Penguin Random House plans to appeal. For the first time in years, new car prices are starting to cool off. So it's hitting an average of just over $46,000 in July. J.D. Power says they've actually been dropping. The average price for a car in the U.S. in October, $45,600. A Vine reboot may be in the works. There's word Twitter's new owner is planning to bring back the defunct platform that allowed users to post six-second long videos. Elon Musk polled users in a tweet then reportedly told employees to develop a new version of Vine. Sources say it could relaunch as early as this year. Ralph Lauren has redesigned its logo for a collab with Fortnite. The Polo Pony has been replaced by the Cartoon Llama, which I've heard is the Fortnite's mascot. mascot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the game outfits will be available in the Fortnite shop on Saturday. Ralph Lauren is the game's third fashion crossover. Today is November 1st, and the San Antonio Zoo is honoring military personnel with free admission this month. The offer applies to active duty, retired, veteran members of the military, National Guard, and reserves with proper ID, according to a news release. You can read more about the special right now over on KSAT.com. Glad you're with us. Right now it's 610, 62 degrees. All right, coming up, could our San Antonio missions be on the move? Coming up a little later on GMSA, we'll tell you why a new stadium in downtown San Antonio could be in the team's future. And it's a tradition that goes back a decade. We'll tell you why patients at a local hospital say the annual superhero drop is so special. 62 degrees on this November 1st. Also, Dia Los Muertos. Remember that at 610 this morning. Some of us got rain overnight. Could we see rain later in the week? and apparently a beautiful weekend. Mike will let us know all about that when we come back. 614 out of Halloween tradition, helping hospital patients right here in San Antonio. Several superheroes braved the heights at Baptist Children's Hospital as they rappelled down the building. Spider-Man seemed to make his way down the building with ease like a pro there. All the superheroes were able to bring a smile to patients and their parents inside. It's super cool. Uh, my son and all my kids love superheroes to actually uh, see them and for them to see it is an awesome experience. San Antonio police and fire crews helped with yesterday's event. It's a tradition that's been happening for the past 10 years. Well, Stephanie's off today, but we wanted to share some of her hun fun Halloween moments from last night. And here's some of the pictures of Steph and oh, who's the guy in the background? He's very Ugh. scary. Ugh. Well, they dressed as Sally from Nightmare Before Christmas. Her and her daughter, um, uh, her and her daughter Rooney dressed yeah. as Sally, and her husband Luis is Jack the Pumpkin. King. Oh, and there's, and there's her mom. mom. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the great costumes. They are always so cute and they dress alike like that. I, I told Steph, I was like, because she says Rooney every year, says, okay, mom, what are we going to be? And I was like, you better just cling on to this. Yes. Because yeah. <laughs> as children get older, they don't want it doesn't your become opinion. very cool to dress with the parents. Oh, everything turned out great. I know Steph was worried because she was at the very last second getting a wig, but... They looked awesome. Happy Halloween. Hope you guys had a great time trick-or-treating. Mike, did they stop by your place or yes. did they? Okay, yeah. I didn't know if you ran into yeah. them in another neighborhood somewhere. No, they, they stopped by my house. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mike you, is Mike. just wondering the neighborhoods. <laughs> <laughs> it's known to happen. 615, 62 degrees. RJ, any incidents out on the roads? Uh, yeah, guys, we got an update to this uh, rollover crash that's uh, basically shut down the exit ramp there in the northwest side between uh, I-10 Advanced Jackson Road. You can see things have officially cleared out. I mean, this literally happened within the past minute or, though, or so. Uh, exit, uh, you know, this ramp was closed off for about an hour or so this morning, but things looking pretty good now in that area. Again, this, this did not really block any of the main lanes, so that was good to, uh, to know there. Um, so taking a look at our big map here, not too much going on around the city as people People uh, maybe get a later start today on the Tuesday after Halloween celebrations, so that is good. There is one incident here on um, Vince Engelman at Loop 410 northbound lanes, and I was trying to look, talk to Transgat a little bit earlier, and they said that they're trying to look for where this is where this is exactly. There's a couple of cameras in that area, but nothing showing that's sort of delaying any traffic in that area. But again, a crash 
reported here at Loop 410 northbound at Ben's Engelman Road. So things looking pretty smooth in that area. As we take another quick look at TransGuide this morning, as we take another look here around the city now that we have cleared things up on the near northwest side at Vance Jackson and I-10, US 281 and Hildebrand, things looking good. 1604 and Petranco out there on the north, on the west side, things looking pretty good as well. How was the trick or treat stream of trick or treaters last night overall? Did was there was there a lot of candy given I mean, out last I, night? I had like 15. 15. And I go all out, and I always get a little sad that I don't. I, I'm in a middle street in my neighborhood, so okay. everyone does the outer streets. They they don't oh. know that the coolest house is in the middle. <laughs> oh, with the they, best candy. With the best, like seriously, yeah. I get. I'm not like Mike who gets like the like cheap lollipops. I get the real like Snickers <laughs> oh. and <laughs> and Alan Joyce. You, you pass out. Like, well, we get eight million people out there. I can't. I know, but you, you, you gotta go all out. Supply yeah. and demand, Acosta. Give so, the people what they want, Mike. So what were you passing? Out. Almond Joys, Snickers, Ooh, full Reese's size? Peanut. No, not re not full size. But I give like handfuls. My husband's like, only give one or two. I go, no, I'm not. I, I'm like giving handfuls out because I'm like, hey, one remember me. This is. I always said, hey, remember, remember me next year. Wow. So maybe um, more, a little more self promotion next year. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know if you actually same conversation that my wife and I had last night. I swear to goodness. Really? So. She gets. She, she was. She was shaming you on. Give, yes. She was like, give out more. Yeah. Yeah. As, I mean, it's, it's like there's, there's a million Halloween is only one night. Hi. Oh, now the <laughs> producer going red. Why? Because you didn't get a full size candy bar producer? <laughs> anyway, uh, go to Sarah's house. Yeah. Uh, the bus. Wait, we got to roll the bus across here. Sorry. Here it is. I lost my place. Uh, 62 degrees this morning. Maybe a couple of light little sprinkles out there and some showers out in northwest portions of the hill country. Going to show you radar in a second. And then 72 after school today with mostly cloudy skies. Going to keep a lot of clouds around the next uh, couple of days. All right. Halloween. Halloween costumes. Take a look at Aww. these two little superheroes. And what you can do is you can scan that uh, that QR code right there and send in pictures of your little superheroes, be it pups, be it kids, whatever, or the pictures of your uh, full size candy bars that Sarah decided to pass out to shame us all. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget her house next year. Thank you very much for the uh, the KSAC Connect picture. All right, uh, fairly tranquil picture out there right now. Looks like 410 is fairly dry. Here's what I was talking about. Still got plenty of rain down to the uh, the southeast right now, and this is in uh, southeastern Atascosa County, as well as working its way through portions of Wilson County. A couple of moderate showers, so some very welcome rain right around Kennedy, and all this obviously is sliding up to the northeast, and that's if you're going down 37. Here in town, there really isn't a lot. There may be a couple little speckles out there. That's about the extent of it, and then we've got some of these showers well out there in northwest portions of the uh, Hill Country, and those will continue to work their way off to the uh, the northeast. So we'll still have at least the chance for a couple of uh, light little showers around this morning. That's why I've got that 40 30 percent chance in there. 62 is where we'll bottom out, and then just kind of struggle to really warm up all that much. 69 at noon, and then 72 for a high temperature today. Still have that. 10% shot of uh, some rain in there. Maybe a leftover sprinkly shower later on this afternoon. Computer models still keep some of the rain down to the uh, southeast. And then some sunshine thrown in, but again, leaning more toward the uh, the cloudier side. And there's one or two of those leftover sprinkles that are possible later on today. So here's what's going on right now. We've got this wave that moved on through. That's what gave us some of the rain. Then we get this big southwesterly flow in the atmosphere, and that's going to help to warm things up, pull in a lot more humidity. We're setting up for that over the next couple of days. And then as this low moves in our direction and this fairly significant trough moves through, this is going to be the front. This will pull the front through late tomorrow, or excuse me, late Friday night into Saturday, and that's going to touch off some of those showers and thunderstorms. But then in behind it, Pacific front, so we're going to get some much drier air moving on in here. Not necessarily much colder air, but that's going to clear us on out for the weekend. The weekend looks fantastic after some rain early Saturday morning. 69 at noon today, mostly cloudy skies. High temperatures going to make it up to 72, so we'll be somewhat on the coolish side. Then tomorrow, and Thursday, going to keep a lot of clouds around here, limited sunshine, more humidity, warmer, and the chance for showers and thunderstorms, a couple of showers during the day Friday, but especially late Friday night, early Saturday morning. Some of those 
could be on the the stronger side and then we'll clear on out Saturday afternoon and Sunday again great looking weekend. I'm excited. I'm more I'm, ex I'm excited too. Good. I'm excited for the fall back. The extra hour. Yes. Very thankful. Yes. 621 62 degrees. All right, Black Friday deals have arrived early this year and the discounts, well, they're big. Those details are just ahead in your GMA First Look. When moderate to severe ulcerative colitis persists, put it in check with Rinvoke, a once daily pill. When UC got unpredictable, I got rapid symptom relief with Rinvoke. Check. When UC held me back, I got lasting steroid free remission with Rinvoke. Check. And when UC got the upper hand, Rinvoke, Rinvoke helped, helped visibly repair, repair the, the colon, colon lining. lining. Check. Check. Rapid symptom relief, lasting steroid free remission, and a chance to visibly repair the colon lining. Check, check, and check. Rinvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers, including lymphoma and skin cancer, death, heart attack, stroke, and tears in the stomach or intestines occur. People 50 and older with at least one heart disease risk factor have higher risks. Don't take if allergic to Rinvoke, as serious reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Put UC in check and keep it there with Rinvoke. Ask your gastroenterologist about Rinvoke and learn how AbbVie could help you save. In this morning's GMA First Look, as we officially head into November, the countdown to Christmas is on. We take a look at the best early Black Friday deals dropping now that you don't want to miss. This morning, Halloween is barely in the rearview mirror, but the holiday sales barrage has already begun. Early holiday deals at Amazon. We're really seeing things start earlier than ever before. Amazon, Walmart, and Target starting major sales campaigns in October. And now from Best Buy, their Black Friday deals right now, promoting the Roku streaming stick at $24, while it normally retails around $50. Or the Black Friday preview from Land's End with these cashmere line tech gloves almost 40% off. And coming up at 7 a.m., what you need to know to strategize ahead of time to save you time and money in order to score the best gifts for all your loved ones. With your GMA First Look, I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. Welcome back. You're about to see a live picture of Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia. That's where the Houston Astros will take the field tonight against the Phillies in Game 3 of the World Series. Game 3 was actually supposed to happen last night, but it was postponed due to that rain in the area. They look so thrilled. <laughs> so sad. The announcement came about an hour before first pitch, so to now it'll be tonight at just about 7 o'clock. Game 4 to be tomorrow night. Game 5 on Thursday. Right now, Houston and Philly are tied at a game apiece in this awesome Best of 7 series. And speaking of baseball, a group of investors includes Rackspace co-founder Graham Weston is looking to buy the San Antonio Missions for about $28 million. It also moved the minor league baseball club into a stadium that will be constructed near the downtown area. That's according to the San Antonio Express News, which says the potential location could be around the San Pedro Creek Culture Park, which is over there off of 35 in kind of the Santa Rosa, North Flores area, Fox Tech. Fox Tech, yeah, mm -hmm. right near that that area. We, that would be really awesome if that happened. It would be cool to have it in the downtown area. We had to kind of ballpark the location and look it up on a map. Yeah. Yeah, got you, got you there. 627, <laughs> 62 degrees. All right, get your phones ready ahead in our next half hour. We're kicking off No Shave November and what you can do to help. Police say a woman's idea of Halloween fun with a gun has left a baby seriously hurt. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you why they say the initial story they were given just didn't add up. Outside with live cam, waiting for the sun to come up on this Tuesday. It is November 1st. Good morning, everybody. Glad you're with us. Good morning. November 1st, also the start to Dia Los Muertos, or Day of the Dead. Happy November 1st and happy No Shave November. It has begun. Some of us got kind of a <laughs> jump on things with the blessing of management, but we're going to have more on No Shave coming up right here on GMSA. We'd like to maintain our top of the leaderboard standing from the last couple of years. Okay, right? so who won sure. last year? Uh, I think it was like a law firm somewhere. But we, no, wait, within KSAT. Oh, within KSAT. <laughs> uh, was it you, Mike? Yeah. 
Was it? Congratulations. Oh, some, some, you some not people, bragging. Some, Look some, at you. Some, some, this year. <laughs> some, some people came in with some very generous donations, and we've got Last different minute, uh, charities. Yeah. Obviously, it's Team KSET, you know, but just kind of has that little bit of, uh, you know, added... I like the competition. I, I, I like to too. also like poke the bear with uh, the competition. Of course. <laughs> May the best beard win, no matter its color. Remember, <laughs> team gray hair, white hair. It's us. We earn this stuff. So did you just stick together. hashtag something? I think I he know. did. <laughs> uh, I'm just shouting out to all those folks with the uh, beautiful lack of color in their uh, hair follicles. So like me. Anyway, uh, 63 degrees right now in uh, in town. Dew points at 57. So we do have. A fair amount of moisture out there. Uh, humidity has gone up, and humidity is going to be going up over the next couple of days. And then, boy, just wait till the weekend, though. Oh, timing's going to be perfect. We have uh, showers and, uh, well, not too much in the way of lightning strikes out there. A few of them, and still some of these showers in southeastern and eastern Atascosa County moving up through Wilson County. Everything's sliding up to the northeast. Kennedy, you're getting some decent rain. Beeville, uh, Quero, some beautiful rain as well. Well, Kern City, so fantastic here in town. Yes, we did have some pretty good thunderstorms overnight, and now um, you got to kind of squint. But there may be a couple little sprinkles left over out there, so just watch it on the roads. So when I came into work this morning, there were still a few little damp spots from some of the uh, some of the rain that we had last night, and then a few more showers further on out to the uh, west and to the northwest. And again, you can see those are all working their way off to the northeast. 59 Valverde, mid 50s hill country. Everybody is warmer than what it was yesterday and about on average 5 to 10 degrees above our respective normals this time of year. Mold and ragweed are both on the low side. Of course, the updated count is going to come out in about an hour or so. Cloudy, a couple of showers around the area, maybe a thunderstorm or two. Still a chance for a shower this afternoon. One or two of them, just a, a mention of it. Mostly cloudy, only 72 for a high temperature later on today. So we will be on the cool side, but then we get in the upper 70s tomorrow. More clouds, a lot of clouds this week, and more humidity. And that's going to be the case Thursday, even a couple of showers then. Got the front moving on through here late Friday. Thunderstorms, especially later Friday, early Saturday. But in behind that, we're setting up for a fantastic weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ, any big problems out there? No, actually, Mike, things have looking pretty good and they've cleared up. We were following that accident there at uh, I-10 and Vance Jackson and then another one there at, at 410 and Binz Engelman Road. But uh, according to our trans guide cameras and tech stop, things have cleared out in both of those areas as we take you outside right now. For more trans guide camera shots here, we were talking about I-10 at Vance Jackson, things looking good there. I-10 at Crossroads, traffic moving along pretty smooth in that area. Again, this all the northwest side there, I-10 at De Zavala. So that is good news for people headed out this morning, 35 at New Braunfels. As we take a look at our big map, and you can see that uh, not too much traffic buildup right now in the city. Of course, on the far west side, there's always, always a little bit of traffic that starts around this time as people make their way in from the Castroville area, but so far, no major accidents or incidents to report. The one thing that we do have that TxDOT is reporting is a stall. This is on the eastbound lanes of Loop 410 at Jackson Keller Road. I've been kind of following this for the past hour or so. It's been sort of coming back on and off of TxDOT's grid, but uh, it appears that this is still an ongoing situation right there. But guys, for the most part, things looking pretty good on your Tuesday morning day after Halloween right there, 281 at San Pedro. Things looking pretty solid this morning as people will head out to work and school. Mark and Sarah. Thank you, RJ. San Antonio police say a woman's behavior at a Halloween party has led to a life-threatening situation for a baby boy. They say that child was hit by a stray bullet as the woman played with a gun. Katrina Weber is live downtown with more on that woman's arrest. What do we know about the condition of the baby, Katrina? Well, the information that we have comes from the arrest affidavit. It says that this 18-month-old uh, baby boy was hit in the chest by a bullet and that he's in serious condition. Now, the woman, meanwhile, is in serious trouble. 33-year-old Eloisa Fraga is charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. The affidavit says she was mishandling a gun at a Halloween party Sunday when it went off, causing a bullet to strike the baby. It says when the baby arrived at the hospital, doctors initially were told that he had been injured by a cell phone that exploded in his hands. But police say his injuries didn't match up with that story. They say the baby actually was holding a cell phone at the time. However, he was hit by a bullet that went through the
the phone. Uh, police say they were able to figure out who's responsible with help from witnesses who were at the party, and they did uh, try to arrest uh, Fraga, but she was gone by the time officers arrived. They were able to obtain a warrant and then take her into custody yesterday. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. More details continue to develop in the shooting case of Eric Contu. His family responding after KSAT investigates reviewed new records in that case. San Antonio police records show Contu evaded now fired San Antonio police officer James Brennan the night before he was shot by the very same officer in a McDonald's parking lot. According to those records, Contu's girlfriend was also in the car both nights as well. She told police Contu sped away from police near 281 in Bitters Road the night, uh, he the, the night before he was shot. It's not clear what police were pulling him over for. Contu's parents have said the car was not stolen and remain focused on their son's recovery. They question statements made in those documents, but said if it is true, no action justifies the officer shooting of Eric. It's been almost a year since Alana Castaneda was shot in the face by a carjacker at the Alamo Quarry Market. She's fought to recover not only physically, but emotionally and mentally. On November 2nd of 2021, police say then 18-year-old Julio Cesar Rivera shot Castaneda in the face outside of a Whole Foods, all because he wanted her car. She's been through hours of physical therapy, several surgeries, including one to reconstruct her orbital floor. The mental struggle has been just as hard. Castaneda was touched by what happened in Uvalde on May 24th. So she made the journey there to offer support, says she knows how it feels to be impacted by gun violence. That was the hardest battle. That was the hardest thing I've ever been through in my life, was just coming in and out of it. Kids do not need to be out here ruining people's lives and taking innocent lives away from families and friends. It's not okay. The man accused of shooting her is still awaiting trial. Castaneda says it was hard seeing him at a court appearance. This past year, she has found comfort in a trauma support group and from simple moments with people who love her, she hopes sharing her story will help someone else. Another top story we're following this morning. Police in Chicago say at least 14 people are hurt after a drive-by shooting last night. Right now, officers believe at least at least two suspects are involved. There was a group of people gathered for a vigil at the corner of where it happened. The victims included children, one of them as young as three years old. One person also hit by a car at the scene. The victims in the hospital, some raging uh, non life threatening injuries and others are in critical. Right now, it's unclear what led to the shootings. Early voting continues this week. So far, 217,500 voters have cast ballots here in Bear County. During the last mid midterm, more than 551,000 votes were cast in 2018. There's still time to cast your ballot. Early voting continues through Friday. Election Day is one week from today. All right, things are about to get a little hairy here at KSAT. Today, we are kicking off No Shave November. It's already a little itchy. Uh, it's all for a great cause. Team KSAT joining in the fundraising efforts across the country to help people impacted by cancers of all kinds. Here's a look at the guys taking part this year. Joining from all parts of our newsroom, we have anchors, reporters, meteorologists, photojournalists, each one with their own reason for participating in this great cause. Right now, you can learn more on our website. Click this QR code. It'll take you to the web story. There you can learn more about how you can donate. Our goal this year for the team is to raise $20,000, and I think it can be easily done. And good luck to all the participants this year. You just scan it? I was scanning it. I was going to see if people have started to donate. I think Stephen Cavazos already has a donation. Oh, already in the lead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 640, 62 degrees. All right, still ahead on GMSA, you've probably been seeing a lot of butterflies flying around. I definitely have in my garden. We'll tell you how to identify some of the ones you're seeing. All right, you may be noticing a lot of butterflies fluttering, or fluttering, fluttering around San Antonio or in your yard. But Sarah says not every orange butterfly is a monarch. There are actually several types of native butterflies that are the same color. But what are those giant yellow ones? Oh, they're beautiful. I talked to the director of the National Butterfly Center about how do I identify the butterflies you are seeing in our area. It's peak butterfly season. Late October, early November is the best time in San Antonio to butterfly watch. Not only are the endangered migrating monarchs making their way to Mexico for the winter, we are also experiencing cooler temps and fall blooms on our native plants, which is why we are seeing several other types of residential butterflies 
feasting before the winter months. And most importantly, learning about our butterflies and the importance of our pollinators is a great activity to do with the family. So what kind of butterflies are we seeing? Not every orange butterfly, large or small, is a monarch or going to become a monarch. Mariana Wright is the executive director of the National Butterfly Center in the Rio Grande Valley. She says the most common mistake that people make is thinking every orange butterfly is a monarch. What you are probably seeing are queen butterflies. Like here in my garden, this month I have about 50 to 100 residential queens every day feasting on my Greg's mist flower. At first glance, they look like monarchs, but they are smaller and a darker orange. Think UT burnt orange, and they have different markings on their wings. Monarchs are larger and a more vibrant orange. Think jack-o'-lantern orange, and they have distinct stained glass-like lines on the top and bottom of their wings. Another orange butterfly you might be seeing are Gulf fritillaries. They are bright orange with a black chain-like band on their wings, and they have brown coloring with beautiful silver elongated spots on the underside of their wings. And then you may be awed by the show-stopping swallowtails. Giant swallowtails are seen in Texas, but there are many species. There are eastern and western giant swallowtails. There are other uh, swallowtails that are yellow and black, like the broad-banded swallowtail. Riot says the best way to identify the butterflies you are seeing is by snapping a photo. Butterflies is with their cell phone or digital camera, take pictures of them and then get a field guide or begin to use an app called iNaturalist. And those are pretty reliable in helping you identify and learn your butterflies as well as the families they fall into. It's actually a really fun activity to do with your family. It's something my dad and I have started doing the last cool. couple of years. He'll snap a photo of a butterfly in his garden. And, and you I'm tell like, him whether he's right or wrong? And, no, and, but back and forth. Or I'll be like, oh, I snapped this. I haven't seen this. And he'll tell me. So That's cool. Yeah. Where's this butterfly center down in the valley? Um, it's in Mission, Texas. Mission. Okay. Beautiful down there. Awesome. I assume people can tour. Yes. Fantastic. Thanks, Sarah. 647. All right, we're going to check in with RJ. RJ, any, anything happening out there on the roads? No, actually, guys, things looking pretty good. And that was uh, very informative, Sarah. And your pictures were awesome. Check out her story on KSAT.com. A lot of great information there as we take you outside here. Again, things looking pretty good out there on your Tuesday morning. US 281 at uh, 410 West. Things moving along smooth there. 90 at Couples on the west side. Things looking pretty good in that area as well. 281 Hildebrand. Uh, you know, a little bit north of downtown. Things looking pretty good as we take a look at our maps here. So no major accidents or incidents to report this morning, but of course we always see this build up around this time of day, especially out in the Helotus area where you can see that traffic is starting to build around the Kyle Seal Parkway area. So just kind of, you know, take your time if you're headed through some of those areas. Now the one thing that we do have uh, to show right now as far as a text dot is a stall right there on the northbound lanes at Loop 410 and State Highway 151. So just kind of keep caution if you're headed in that area. Now, if you look at 151, that's already kind of building up there in the SeaWorld area. So just kind of take caution if you're headed out into these areas. Mike, how are things looking outside? You know, we've got a couple of uh, damp spots on the roads or maybe a sprinkle or two out there, but um, we'll still see a couple of couple of showers. We'll take a look at radar in just a moment. I love this picture, though. Cruella DeVille and her seven Dalmatians. That's just a great Great picture. Thank you very much for the uh, the KSAC Connect picture. All right, uh, 410 looks to be fairly dry out there by the airport right now. And as far as rain, obviously the majority is well down here, right around uh, the coastal plain. And then you look at southeastern uh, Atascosa County and right around Wilson County, Floresville, a couple of showers there. Kennedy, you're getting some decent rain. Quero, you're getting some decent rain. So fantastic down there. A little bit closer into town. Um, you almost have to squint to see if there's anything, and it doesn't look like there's any sprinkles that are showing up on radar as of uh, as of right now. And then further off to the northwest, we've got just a couple of these uh, showers out here in extreme northwestern portions of the uh, hill country, and those appear to be sort of dying down, but at least you're getting some of those showers out there in Edwards as well as uh, Real County. Can't completely rule out another uh, couple of sprinkles. Obviously, this 40% chance takes into account some of those showers in our southeastern counties this morning. We'll bottom out at 62 degrees and then slowly work our way up to up through the 60s, get up to 69 by noon. 
limited sunshine today. Just a lot of clouds around here. A stray shower is possible this afternoon. That's why I still have that 10% in there. Only 72 for a high temperature today, so we will be start off on the warm side of normal and then end up on the cool side of our afternoon normal high temperature. There's some of those leftover showers down to the uh, southeast later on this morning and early afternoon. And again, one or two of them perhaps even late this afternoon. Like I said, limited sunshine. All right, jump ahead to Friday. Now Thursday, couple of sprinkles are going to be possible, but a slightly better chance for rain on Friday in the morning hours and then throughout the afternoon. Then we get into the nighttime and that's when the front's going to work its way on through here. We'll have some showers and thunderstorms. That'll be the case overnight into the wee hours of Saturday morning. Then that all clears on out and that sets us up for a fantastic looking weekend around here because we've got another Pacific front moving on through. That's going to get rid of all the humidity and we'll be down to normal or even slightly below normal temperatures for much of the weekend. 69 at noon today, mostly cloudy skies. Again, limited sunshine, a lot more clouds, mostly cloudy. A sprinkly shower to possible this afternoon, not very likely leftovers down to the southeast. Tomorrow and Thursday, still a lot of clouds. Very mild getting back up to normal tomorrow and above that by Thursday. More humidity around here. Warm on Friday. A few showers around that front moves through later Friday night. A couple of those showers and thunderstorms. A few of those storms potentially could be on the uh, strong side. We're going to keep monitoring that situation. And then things clear out 74 Saturday down to 53 Sunday morning. A great looking weekend and get out and enjoy it. We shall. Worst Fest this weekend. Oh, yeah. Starts Friday. Yep. Here we go. It's good Excited. to have Worst Fest back. 651, 62 degrees. November is National Diabetes Awareness Month. More than 30 million Americans suffer from type 2 diabetes, different than type 1. So tomorrow on GMSA, the myths, the truths, and the early signs to look out for, that's tomorrow on GMSA. Outside with live cam here at exactly 652. Come on, son, time to come up on this uh, Tuesday morning, first day of the month of November, and uh, we're so glad you're starting your day with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Taking one final look here at our TransGuy traffic cameras. Things looking pretty good out there in the city right now. 281 at Loop 410 West. Things looking good. 90 at Couples there on the west side. Traffic moving along smoothly on your Tuesday morning. Take a look at our bird's eye view here of the city, and you can see just pretty much the normal buildup that we've had in uh, pretty much most normal mornings there out there in uh, 90 and 1604. A little bit of a traffic buildup, and up there in Helotus, again, some buildup up there but uh, again no major incidents or disturbances right now on the roads so this is a uh, good news this morning mike how are things looking outside well no glow of the uh, sunrise this morning and uh, the really detectable rain obviously is down to the southeast there may be a little bit of a, a sprinkle left over here in town just to watch out for a couple of uh, damp spots on the road 63 right now mid 50s hill country temperatures are on the mild side but then it stays kind of cool this afternoon 72 for a high temperature very nice. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Have a great day. Good Morning America is next.